Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Talk Spicy. I'm Coach Gene Clemens. Thank you for joining me wherever you are joining me. Rate the show, comment, whatever you do, keep it spicy. I am on location today because it is a beautiful day outside. And so I decided to get me a workout in and then record directly from the park. I am at beautiful Lake Mare in Savannah, Georgia, if you were wondering. And it's very interesting I'm actually here because I think that we, we sometimes short this whole to America's thing, but it really does come into play when you start to look at the sports climate that we live in. We live in an atmosphere where sports is supposed to be the great equalizer. Sports is supposed to be the, um, the place where it's all about meritocracy. If you're the best, then you get to play. If you're the best, then you get the job. If you're the best, then you get the accolades that come with being the best. Until you all of a sudden look up and the best are not being recognized as the best because. Or you look up and you see that the best is being ridiculed at a level that we don't see others being ridiculed at. It becomes to Americas, but it's interesting because a lot of times we believe the two Americas to be black and white. And while many times, because those are the two large socio because those are the two large races that play a part in the socioeconomic landscape, that's where we tend to go. But it really is more about how you grow up and not necessarily what color you grow up as. For instance, in the NBA, we all of a sudden are seeing all of these attacks, we'll call them, on NBA players. And the, the number one thing people go to is race. And while I've never been shy about calling out racial injustice when racial injustice is there, I don't believe that this is necessarily predicated on race. It just so happens that because of the socioeconomic structure, it looks that way. So we take all of these incidences and we talk about Westbrook, people throwing pop, somebody throwing popcorn on Westbrook, a bottle being thrown at um, Kyrie Irving, um, racial slurs in, in Utah, and um, what happened, the spitting on Trey, on Trey Young, which, by the way, people are like, well, I don't know if they really tried to spit on him. They 100% tried to spit on Trey Young, and this is, why, this is how I know that they 100% tried to spit on Trey Young. Because the woman that's right behind Trey Young flinches all of a sudden. She didn't flinch for no reason. She all of a sudden felt something that disgusted her to a level that made her flinch. Go back and look at the video. She's sitting there. Then all of a sudden she does this. And you do that when something comes from behind you that you don't know what it is. So clearly someone tried to do something to Trey Young. To me, that's not, that's not arguable. But the idea behind socioeconomic impact is when you have these arenas that are not full to capacity, what do teams do? teams raise the price of tickets. They essentially price out anybody from a lower socioeconomic area, which means you're going to go you're going to have less and less minorities. When you pan through a lot of these arenas, not just in Boston or in New or in or in Utah, but in New York and in Atlanta, the most you see are white people. Because the socioeconomic landscape tells us there are more affluent white people than there are black people or Hispanic people or, or East Asian. So it's not as if we're seeing something that's necessarily racially charged, although it could be. We're seeing that privilege is able to come to the game more than people who are not privileged. Well, what does that mean for why people are more bold emboldened to throw things at players. Well, here's very simple. They didn't grow up in a world where they got their, whoop, their butt whooped. If you grew up in a world 
Well, you got your head knocked off when you did stupid stuff, then you would have far less people going the route of, I'm going to throw a water bottle at a player because in their minds, they would realize the ramifications. Stop me if you've heard, if you've seen this before. You've been at a store and a um, little kid is wilding out, acting crazy, and the mother or the father are just sitting there. Come on, honey, stop. You got it. Blah, 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 blah. And you look at them like, really? What are you doing? Because you know and I know, if you grew up the way in which I grew up, if you acted that, if you acted in that manner, you would get destroyed right there in front of everybody. My mother, my grandmother, they did not play that type of that type of game. If you acted out in public, then guess what you got? You got your punishment in public. And so, as a reference, my brain always knew there was consequences for these types of ignorant, childish, malicious action. And therefore, it made me think twice as I grew up about doing any of these stupid things that we see these people doing. But when you grow up in a life of privilege, that is not the case. And how do I know that's not the case? Because I've seen people who've grown up in a life of privilege. They are not, they are not policed the same way. And I'm not talking about police officers. I'm talking about by parents. They're not policed by parents the same way. And then therefore they're not policed in society the same way. And so they, 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 they don't have the caution that gets beaten into them. They don't get, they don't have the caution that they get from the repercussions from their actions because there have been no repercussions for their actions. So is that a black-white thing? Absolutely not. That's simply a privilege versus no privilege type of thing. We did not have the privilege to act like idiots. If we did, we had ramifications. And in my neighborhood or where I grew up at, the ramifications didn't even have to come from mom or grandma. It could come from lady down the street that that was my auntie. It could come from woman around the corner who knew me to know that, oh, he's not supposed to act that way. I'm going to beat his butt, and then I'm going to take him home to his mom. Mom's going to beat his butt as well. I used to think that was a joke until it started happening to me, and then I was like, oh, my mom and grandma were telling the truth. So now that's what we get. We get that privilege from these people who believe they can do things without ramifications. And they're emboldened by the fact that not only do they not have to worry about ramifications from their actions, but that if you respond, pro athlete, that you are going to have your life ruined the same way that Ron Artest had his life ruined. So not only could I demean you, can I make you lesser of a person, if you respond in kind, I get to have a part in destroying your entire career. That's that's the type of that's the type of privilege that many of us lower socioeconomic people know nothing about. And it doesn't matter how much money I make in my lifetime, I always know that that's a thing. And so I'm never going to put myself in a position to do that. That's not the way my br my brain works. So when people don't understand how this privilege takes over, that's how privilege takes over. It's two Americas, but it's not always black America, white America. Sometimes it's just well-off America, America that doesn't come from privilege. Another interesting thing that I've, that I've noticed um, here in, in the recent is we just can't get over the fact that Americans, in large part, especially football Americans, just don't like the idea that Lamar Jackson is having success because it makes them, um, for lack of a better word, it makes them have to eat crow. And we know that people who like to be right don't like to admit when they're wrong. So Lamar Jackson, in a lot of rankings right now, is ranked below Right below Josh Allen. And I use Josh Allen not to disparage Josh Allen. I have been very impressed 
with the growth of Josh Allen. Do I think he's still wildly flawed? Of course I do. Do I think he's better than um, Lamar Jackson? He never has been. He never will be. He never has been, and there's a good chance he never will be. But the moment that he has a season that's actually legitimately better than Lamar Jackson, I'll let you know, because last season, his season wasn't actually better than Lamar Jackson. His team's record was better than Lamar Jackson's team's record. But his season wasn't better. Put all the numbers together. Put all the numbers together. I'm still taking Lamar Jackson over Josh Allen. I'm sorry. So, to me, it's not a situation where I'm looking at this and going, well, you know, Josh Allen has surpassed Lamar Jackson because we've always operated on this thing doesn't happen on a one-year sample size. And so for me, in the three years that both of those players have been in the league, Lamar Jackson is here. Josh Allen is here. It's not close, ladies and gentlemen. And Josh Allen has the luxury of his team creating an offense that's predicated on him not making mistakes, but also allows him to be a quarterback first, whereas Lamar Jackson has an offense that's predicated on him not making mistakes, but has not allowed him to always be a quarterback first. They've allowed him to be a football player first. And to me, I'm going – let that football player be a quarterback and watch what happens because his entire, his entire career, that's what we've seen to America. If Lamar Jackson, if Lamar Jackson was Josh Allen, if you just take the names and switch the names, there's no way that the Buffalo Lamar Jackson would be ranked ahead of the Baltimore Josh Allen. That's to America's. That comes from a black and white situation that we've always seen with the quarterbacks. I don't know why. I'll never understand why. All I know is, Josh Allen, you're on notice because Lamar Jackson backed up an MVP season with another really good season. Josh Allen, how are you going to back up your almost MVP season? We shall see. But there's definitely two Americas. I mean, I don't think we can, we, we can get around that. I mean, think about just in the, in the standpoint of karaoke and how karaoke goes in this country, right? If you go to a karaoke show, there are two types of karaoke DJs. And I know this because I used to DJ karaoke. Um, the one type of DJ is the one who is a all comers, bring your tired, your poor, your hungry. Um, I want to be able to, you know, put a good show on for the world. And the other karaoke DJ is all about making money. Am I saying that there's a wrong or a right? No. Am I saying there's one that I respect and one I don't respect? Yes. Because the karaoke DJ that just looks to have a great show always makes money. They always make money. They either make the money that they make because they're doing the show or they make money off of the business that they are able to garner because their show's so good, they get tips. But the one that's only about making money, they usually don't last long in that particular job because or they never expand the job because people know well, this isn't a really good show. That person just cares about money. Isn't it weird how that type of situation plays over into almost every walk of life? When we start focusing on money as the number one goal, we lose the part of us that really enjoyed what it is we did, that really enjoyed the craft. Now, in sports, football, basketball, baseball, see, here's the difference. In, in basketball, in baseball, guaranteed contracts mean that once you get the money, you can just focus on how much you love your sport, how much you love playing your sport. 
because the money is guaranteed. But in football, they've almost made it impossible for football players to just enjoy playing football. They have to be looking at the money because the money is so fleeting and it's not on the level of baseball or, ba- or baseball or basketball. It's amazing how that works. The Yankees are successful because they have the best players. But that's because they're not worried about making money. They know that winning makes money, so they focus on spending money on the best players. Yet you have teams like Tampa Bay who spend the least amount of money, and they say, well, we can't afford it. Yet their owners are continually making money. And so they might have one good season or two good seasons, but they can't sustain because they refuse to spend money on the players that make them good. It's amazing that karaoke thing that I've come up with over the years has, has held off in so many other things, but I think it's, I think it's true. I think it, I think it has bearing. So for me, when I see a karaoke show and the DJ is predicating who sings off of who tips, I don't attend that karaoke show anymore. I don't because I know that's not a good show. I can just look at the products they're putting up there. Did you know that whenever you find people who can sing and you put them on the stage, it actually makes more people want to sing. It doesn't deter them from singing. It actually makes more people want to sing. When I was a, when I was a, a KJ, when I had slow nights and people were not singing, I sung because I knew that me singing would get more people to sing. But on nights where there's a packed house, I don't sing. You know why? Because I want other people to sing. Those guys who are all about money, guess what they still do? They still try to get themselves in the rotation. And I'm like, wait a minute. Tonight's not about you. You've got every other night that you do the show for it to be about you. When people get their money, it allows them to then play for the love and the freedom that the money has afforded. And the NFL, because of the way it's structured, has pulled the love, has pulled the joy from the game for the players because they have to be worried about money, unless you're a quarterback. And more specifically, historically, unless you're a white quarterback. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me on Talk Spicy. We do this thing two times a week. I'm Coach Gene Clemens. Rate the show. Um, comment. Agree, disagree, but whatever you do, keep it spicy. Five star ratings are five star ratings are appreciated. And if you are joining me on my YouTube channel, like, subscribe, definitely leave a comment. We will see you next time. Peace.